What's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 38 of Value Town. I'm your host, Chan Man V, and co hosting with me, as always, is Trump over here to my right. What's up, Trump? Hello. All right. Good stuff, good stuff. I, I can smell the motivation. <laughs> the motiv- um... And then we got our guest today, first time guest on Value Town. Uh, a person that you've probably seen a lot around the community over time. He's been par- he's been doing Hearthstone even before the beta, I, I believe. Been doing some some cool events, it's just articles and stuff like that for uh, you know the Mana Grind at the time. Uh, but we got Noxious. Welcome to the show, buddy. Greetings and happy to be here. Actually, didn't expect it. Didn't happy expect it. Uh, and you know, I've been meaning to invite you for the longest time. I mean, we we obviously met at BlizzCon and. Like for for like months now, I've been been uh, ho- been wanting to get you on the show, and finally, I, I feel like this is the right time to get you on and to talk about Nax Ramus play quarters. And uh, you know, it's good stuff, right? Nax, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> what is that? What oh, no, 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 I'm not saying anything. It's good stuff. It's great stuff. It's amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, today, guys, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about play quarters. Uh, we always went over all the cards last week, and but we'll talk about just the bosses and, and maybe some of the, the kind of cool strategies and decks that, that uh, we, we've all come up with. And then we'll go into some deck talk. Nox- Noxious has a pretty cool mage deck he's been having a lot of success with. And then Trump's had his free-to-play run with Rogue and then Zoo recently, so we'll get, uh, we'll get the lowdown on that also. Uh, and then at the end, we'll do Q&A as always. You guys, go ahead and tweet your questions to at chainmanv and we'll try to get to as many questions as possible at the end of the show but okay let's talk about play quarters uh so everybody here got people say well, people boy. say you're sounding very loud compared to both of us oh am i okay let me turn down let me turn down a little bit okay that should be better uh okay so play quarters uh everybody got into play quarters okay right it took time i guess for yeah when people. did you I when got, did you I get got in? fine Oh, I got in fine on. I tried it on Asia the day before, like it came out a lot earlier, and then I got in instantly on uh, NA because I think I think if you'd purchase this with money, yeah. Previously, it didn't lock or some something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I didn't have any problems. Purchasing it with money versus gold was there a difference? I, I didn't even. I mean, I was just trying I, to purchase with gold, so. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe gold too much Q and money just goes in <laughs> premium. <laughs> I don't know. Trump, did you get in like immediately or it take some time? Uh, I couldn't do it on Asia since I didn't have the money there, so mm-hmm. I did it on Europe, and it didn't take the first few times, but after an hour I did it, I know that there are still some people who have problems with it, Yeah. so uh, it wasn't a great release, but I got in eventually. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I, I got in yeah, la- last night, too, so, uh, but, it, but you know, once you got in, it was pretty fun, and I figured we should talk about just the... The bosses, uh, the three bosses, and even the, the the class challenges, and even you know heroics and that sort of bit. Uh, so, what do you think about the three three bosses? I mean, they're they're all quite different. Uh, it's kind of similar to that Arachnid Quarters too, where it's like I think people probably use different decks for you know two or you know one or two of the the bosses. Uh, did you guys were you guys able to use the same decks against all three, or did you have to switch it up? Like, what 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 classes did you use against each? This is a spoiler, um, by the way, guys. If you guys haven't gotten in yet, like, don't listen to the first part of the show. Like, kind of tune it off for about 15, 20 minutes here, and then then join back in a little later. Yeah, so I I use different classes. Uh, I think the thing is on Asia, I use a very different lineup because it was I basically made a new account, completed the tutorial, and threw myself on heroic knacks with basic cards. Mm-hmm. Something you never, by the way, want to do. Um, you will smash your head against the wall <laughs> time and time again. I did the first one with Ram Druid, then I think the other one was Ram Druid, okay. uh, Priest on Hagen. Hagen? Was that? Yeah, it was Priest. And then the last one was Priest as well with Elven Archers to ping off the initial spore to kill the Fen Keeper. It was very, it's very RNG based, but I got it done with basic cards. It took ages. Never again. <laughs> Never again. How about you, Trump? I had a similar path. I had to use an account with uh, not very many cards. I did have my. Uh, my Europe account is where I did my free-to-play Shaman, so I had the Shaman deck, which I ran for all of normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried out all the heroics with the Shaman. I didn't try out Noth because I knew it would be a disaster with the Shaman. <laughs> yeah, so I um, did Hygen, and that was fine. I got that pretty easily with Shaman since uh, I could just sack the totems to the ability. Oh, yeah. I didn't even On think about that. On Lowethab, I built a Wisp Rush deck 
and it worked out pretty well. <laughs> with, uh, I chose Rogue because it has Sap to deal with that Fen Creeper. I think that was oh, pretty good. Oh, that was nice. Oh, wow. And okay, yeah, that's cool. On Noss, I just went with a Priest, and then like I literally put in 30 Priest cards, and then I luckily won the first one. It was like some Divine Spirit inner fire thing, since I didn't want my stuff to die. Oh, wow, that must work. Wonders. <laughs> I should have tried that. Oh, yeah. I should have tried that. Yes, yeah, so, uh, let's see. I, I think with Noth, I, I, I ended up doing it with a Warlock. Uh, just adding every one of those sacrificial packs and corruption and everything just to, to kill off as much of the, the the demons as possible. And then, yeah, sacrificial pact is a surprisingly good idea. Yeah, even corruption actually worked, ended up decently. Uh, let's see. Hagen. Hagen? What did I end up using for Hagen? Hagen, I think I... Wait, that's the one that's... Oh, two of the, the leftmost, right? Um, I forget what I used for Hagen. I might have used, continued to use maybe a handlock, I think, for Hagen. I can't actually remember. Uh, I know for Loetheb, I used um, a priest in the end, just with all the healing. And, uh, you know, Lightwell was actually pretty good, too. So, Lightwell and uh, Earthen Ring and some of those that like, ended up working out. I ended up getting this 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 situation where I I holy novaed and I ended up with two guys with over forty damage because <laughs> they had the like spores? yeah they had like five spores or four spores on the on the board so I ended up with two minions with insane yeah. amount of damage. Uh, the AI is not the best on Lothab. I mean he he wants faceless a spore. Yeah, he did that to me. He did that to me. I never understood why. Yeah, I, so. I'll never understand. But I liked it. I liked the design of it. Lothab, I think, in normal was super easy, and then for some reason it took a little bit, it took a few tries, or several tries for me in, in uh, Heroic. Uh, but, yeah, overall, I think it was it was cool. It was interesting, like, how the, the bosses were designed. What did you guys think, like, overall? Just uh, do you think one, any of them were too easy, or do you think they were just, just right? Um, no, I think they were... Well, honestly, I think Heroic versions mm -hmm. are almost i wouldn't say they're like the normal one is you know obviously kind of easy if you have the right deck yeah but i find on heroic it's borderline not even in your hands whether or not you're going to win a lot of the time i feel like the wins i get i don't deserve and the ones i lose i don't deserve either it's just something that happens it's kind <laughs> of it's really really mind-boggling what do you mean yeah. by like you don't deserve it you mean it's like, just, did you have the two right cards in your starting hand? Did he not top deck you time and time and time again? I don't know. It's it's worse than, you know... Uh, I don't know. It, they just seem to have those those cards that if they don't have them, you can beat them easily. And mm -hmm. if they do happen to play those at the right time, there's no way you can come back at any point. The AI mm -hmm. is just... The AI is not great, but the cards they have and abilities are broken beyond belief, which is what makes them hard. Hmm, Okay. Uh, Trump, what do you think of the bosses? Yeah, you're not just it? on this one. Yeah. But in the challenges mm -hmm. defense, you do have to really build some decks specifically tailored to the encounters, which I find really cool. Yeah. And yeah, even when you build the perfect counter deck, you bring it and sometimes you lose. I think that's fine. It's the nature of a card game. Yeah. And you know, you can't beat the boss in the first try. Sometimes it gets lucky. That's fine. Yeah. It's the nature of Hearthstone. Um, I thought that there were some of the more interesting uh, challenges there, especially the hunter one. I know everyone just talked up. <laughs> like, there's so much hype over it where you have the deck with 30 web spinners. It's amazing. I thought it was really fun. And yeah. Lothab, in general, has a really cool uh, encounter. I think this was one of the best wings in terms of the encounters. So, yeah, I, I, cool. I, I, if you got to play it. Yeah. I can agree, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I, I mean, to your point, Noxious, I think um, I think some of that, you know, just that, that kind of feeling that you have have to do with just how the boards are set up, right? I mean, there a couple of these boards are set up with, like, the Fen Creeper, right? And even with, uh, I, I think, the the Void Caller in the other one. Oh, where, yes. You know what I mean? It's just, like, you have to have certain cards to answer these cards immediately, or they immediately just burst you down, like, to the point yeah. where it's like almost impossible to stay alive uh so yeah. the, the levels are definitely set up to to at least force you to to start off with you know with a good hand um but it would be you know wouldn't be as great if, if it was easy and i think making a strong ai is it takes so much time right i, I think you know so the way they make up for it is just to 
try to come up with you know ways where the boss is just ridic- you know, has a ridiculous amount of hit points. It's not some really kind of shortcuts to make it a little bit tougher for everybody. Yeah, it, they the, basically the the puzzle is the deck building and not so mm-hmm. much the playing a yeah. lot, um, which I understand what they're going for. I understand that. Yeah, it's easier than designing an AI from scratch that can actually compete with you know the endless possibilities. I guess yeah. that you could come up with. So with the web spinners, guys, the hunter, the the class quest or whatever. Uh, what's the best thing you got with a web spinner? Because I was getting garbage every time I would I would crash those web spinners. <laughs> I, I never got a crush. I, I never got a Savannah High main. I got like patriarchs and wolves, and I mean, it just got garbage. <laughs> I don't even know how I got by it with, with the, some of those cards. But did you guys have any dream scenarios with it? Not really. I mean, Tundra Rhino won the game for me systematically okay. like that one card makes yeah. it so easy that's true just getting a bunch of charge on yeah. on all those tiny minions how about you trump yeah tundra rhino mvp um i got a good mix of minions some of them were actually pretty useful so i ended up doing some degenerate engine of uh starving <laughs> buzzard tundra rhino and then web spinner web spinner web spinner web spinner, web spinner right. about like seven times, <laughs> seven <laughs> seven times. times. Like oh spinners. my god that's awesome Good stuff. And then the mage one, too. What would you guys think about that? That was just, like, secret after secret after secret. Uh, did you, did you guys too memorable for me, I think. I remember Mad Scientist. Is that... Is that, is that yeah, possible? that's... The, I think they... Well, they kept playing Mad Scientist, right? I, I believe the... I believe I the it. hero kept playing Mad Scientist, and it would just... There would just be three secrets most of the game for me. Yeah, I, I don't remember that's... at all... That's one of the class challenges, which really depended on your draw. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I actually started off that challenge with a Secret Keeper and then a Kieran Tor Mage. And I was like, oh man, if I get a Secret, it'll be amazing. And draw a Secret for some time. But uh, eventually I did get to them. And oh, and also it has like random Nubian eggs, which are really good against that specific encounter. Oh yeah, that's so, true. Uh, it, it's a deck that's kind of built against Hygen, so that's cool. And then eventually I got to have the two secret keepers and the five secret dream and then attack him with like <laughs> five, six secret keepers. And it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very flavorful deck, I'd say. Uh, these are two of the more memorable uh, hero challenges for me, although I can understand that sometimes your mage draw doesn't draw into like the flavor of it or just any class mm-hmm. challenge. Other than the hunter, it doesn't draw into the flavor of it and then it's like, oh, man, this is kind of doesn't seem that great but the design of it is cool yeah yeah it was a very focused deck Mm -hmm. Uh, i I, just wonder like because i have one question about the mage deck because you realize how many secrets you can get through mad scientist you can bypass the seemingly cap uh, the seeming cap on secret amounts that you can have in an actual game um so if you get all the secrets through Mad Scientist, I think you can basically have one of each as opposed to a certain maximum. Because playing them through your hand, I think there, I think you can get only. Uh, was, is it three? I think it's yeah, just it's three. three right? Right? I've never seen yeah. more than three. Oh, um, I th- can you have more? I thought it was five. Like I, I read up on this and I was mm-hmm. like, oh man, I didn't even know there was a cap. So I've heard it's five. Oh, it's actually five. All okay. right. I've never seen that many question marks on. It's pretty hard to pull that off. To yeah. get five? Because uh, you will trigger yeah. both at once, like Ice Bear and Vaporize, mm-hmm. right. and then Counterspell and Spellbender. So a lot of them can just go off off of one action. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely makes Mad Scientist so... I mean, Mad Scientist obviously gives you that ability with, with uh, Kirin Tor. Yeah. I wonder if that will ever become viable, Secret Mage. I mean, it seems like that's what they're trying to position with Duplicate being a secret, right? And uh, the card Mad Scientist, too. Yeah, well, I can't wait for Mad Scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't wait for this card. All right, well, we'll talk some more about the Mage deck in just one second. Um, as for the lore, Trump, you know, obviously you're our, our World of Warcraft lore guy. Uh, how, how does the lore match up, like, in with this play quarter? Uh, I think the lore matches up really well. Mm-hmm. So Noth says a um, very memorable line from his uh, Nax Ramus World of Warcraft raid. Uh, rise and fight again, something along those lines. Yeah, rise my soldiers and 
fight yeah, once more. Fight it, yeah. yeah, rise and fight more. Then his Caesar ability is very flavorful. Uh, Hygen is infamous for the Hygen dance, and uh, <laughs> it's good that you have to worry about positioning. Loxus was actually mentioning that a lot of it is in deck construction, but that was one fight where yeah. the play was mm -hmm. really important. And finally, the last one, uh, Lothab, that's like the most flavorful of them. Uh, in the actual fight as well, It in World of Warcraft, it just kept stacking uh, health loss on you, which is reflected in the hero ability, and then you kill the spore and you get super powered and you kill. Like, all of them were mirrored very, very well. And, it's like, cool. all the cards they played also were very flavorful. It's tough to quite explain, but... Uh, but you've played they Nax, play you know what it is. Parts yeah. for their yeah. class, for their hero. Okay, well that's great. I mean, that's obviously yeah, you know, that's keeping with the lore. I think was really really important to them too, and it's kind of cool seeing it translated into the card game. Uh, so the spores, we're obviously not going to see the spores in in constructed. That, that that's just insane. Uh, but uh, you know, definitely made made for that boss battle, you know, to be really swingy and and cool in that in that regard. I kind of wish Alex didn't exist. Like, how much harder would these? Well, actually, the the Loatheb one wouldn't have uh, mattered that much. But uh, did did Alex play any role in in any of these battles for you guys? Not for me. I never played Alex in any okay. Nax encounter, so yeah. I could not tell you. I know well, in the I know in Arachnid, like I, I think I played Alex in every single one, but this one didn't seem that <laughs> as much. <laughs> Funny that you mention yeah Alex. Uh, it was actually infamous in this particular quarter for not uh, for backfiring badly on one of the encounters for uh, low at that perhaps right they could make that for others as well although i think only in one specific one uh let's see one specific one in this one mm -hmm. is where alex would hurt um to that i think like there's some validity perhaps instead of being 45 health 30 health 15 armor is one uh, good suggestion oh I yeah saw. yeah that would be good I've seen that suggested yeah. a lot, a lot, yeah. That would that would make things quite a bit harder, I think, for some of the bosses. Obviously, not all of mm -hmm. them, but that would be cool. All right. Well, anyways, you know, play quarters. I think you know overall, it's been it's been a lot of fun. I can't wait to start, you know, trying to come up with some cool decks uh, with with the cards. I haven't gotten a chance to. I just, I think I was able to build maybe one hunter deck just for for giggles, you know, with uh, web spinner and and Loatheb. But uh, today I'm probably going to try to build some more. But I know you guys have at least played around with some of the decks. And why don't we go into some deck talk here. And we'll start out with Noxious. You have a mage deck that we were going to talk about. Yeah, very standard in some ways, I think. And, oh, it's standard. So, yeah, so let's talk about it. So I, I think just first glance at it, it looks like a giant mage deck. Uh, but you yeah. do have Loatheb in it. You do have Duplicate in it. So talk to us about duplicate being like duplicate i guess you're trying to go for the the big giants here or like well it's yeah it started off as a joke honestly initially i was just <laughs> trying to have, have fun with people like lotheb mailhouse mukla cold light oracles and show to mail them and fill their hand up as fast as possible with duplicate and then eventually i you know tore everything apart and kept only what i thought was relevant and it eventually looked like a freeze mage um except no ice lands no blood mage Thalnos. Uh, there's no Archmage Antonidas for the late game, so I just kept the Giants, and I used Duplicate as a kind of gotcha tool, because whatever they duplicate in the deck is pretty much good for you. Uh, it's Lothab is a nightmare for some classes to deal with. Sometimes you'll fall behind. You know, sometimes between turns, you know, just before turn six, you want to go Nova Doomsayer, but you don't actually have it, and it's very hard to wipe the board. If you play Lothab, I find she buys you time until you can start having the Blizzard Flame Strike sequence until the late game. Mm -hmm. And if they kill it while you have a duplicate, well, that just buys you even more time. So I find duplicate is very interesting, especially with Twilight Drakes, because against Shamans being one of the weak to me freeze matchups, it's one of the matchups where if they have the Earth Shocks and Hexes properly, if you play Giants, because obviously, you know, if you're playing standard Freeze Mage, they generally have a much harder time of it. Um, mm -hmm. They will silence off the Doomsayers and you won't get good board wipes. So they typically silence the Drake, you'll get two back. And uh, at that point, they're running out of hexes and silences to deal with Doomsayers and Giants. It's kind of cool. It's a really weird, really weird deck. I'm still mm -hmm. not sure about the Kirin Tor Mage. Uh, I think Polymorph is probably more suited to it because you have no good answer to Ragnaros. But in general, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty good. 
I'd say I like it. I like playing with it a lot. It's a lot more hand locky of a play style, I find. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you've been having a lot of success too, right? I mean, you were telling me like, yeah, what's the best match? Like, how does it do against Zoo? Same as a regular freeze mage, yeah, okay. except Makes you sense. get more moltens because they try to trade, and you duplicate them back, or they try to kill <laughs> oh Doomsayer, you get two of them back. They just kind yeah. of right. It deflects damage away from your face, and it just gives you more outs afterwards. It's pretty good. Hmm. Cool, Trump. What do you think about this deck? Man, I'm actually just really surprised because props to you, Noxious, for putting duplicate in the deck. All right, uh, it's. <laughs> It's one of those, it was like, I could see it working, and it, it's hard to see it being necessarily better than the usual Freeze Mage, but yep. I could see this uh, perhaps working on the, some of it, because Duplicate doesn't trigger haphazardly when you're playing this deck, and mm -hmm. like they will just think it's Ice Block some of the time, or a lot of the time, and then... Other than that, like, uh, Ice Lance, I think, is really important, but perhaps you can get away with not playing it in with the giant version. Yeah, kind of well, it's the only... It's, I'm kind of sacrificing the OTK. That's the problem, and I notice it a lot. I rely on having giants on the board to kill. Mm -hmm. um, it's much, much, much tougher. Like, I barely ever fireball the face. It barely ever happens. I end up using it as spot removal. But, yeah. Collateral Cool can be fun as well against Handlock with Duplicate or against uh, Miracle Rogue. I've killed, I think, three Miracle Rogues with Collateral Calls just because of that. It's kind of funny. It's funnier than great, I'll be honest with you. But it started as a fun <laughs> deck and then it kind of evolved in a semi-good deck. I've gone like 8-0 and on rank 2 right now. It's not too bad. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's it's, not, really it's, not, it's not the worst. There are worse decks. Yeah, but, well, well yeah, of course there are worse decks, worse decks okay. but it's just not like I wouldn't put it tier one by far. It's just yeah. surprising on ladder. Yeah, the Kieran Tour. It's kind of funny because it's good and bad for you, right? Especially with duplicate, because if if you throw down a yep. Kieran Tour, you don't really want to duplicate a Kieran Tour. And so that's yeah, where it that's can the get thing. Weird. It's mm -hmm. kind of problematic. That's why usually like it's because I face a lot of Lothab, and I realize if I don't have Kieran Tour, I'll never get the Ice Block in time. And oh, it actually ended up kind of working out because I could cancel their Lothab with my Lothab or the Kirin Tor to an extent. Oh, okay. um, it wasn't the initial intent, but it works for good turns with uh, a nice clutch ice block late game. Yeah, and what he's what he's referring to is that uh, with Lothab, obviously, causes your opponent to have plus five on his next or his next turn, right, for all spells. But it's an ordering situation. So if you have a if you yourself have a card or some of your Loth Lothabs played against you, and then you have a card that affects spells too, like say Kirin Tor that makes makes secrets free, then it's always the latter one that takes hold, right? So um, that's kind of what Noxious is referring to there. It, it allows him to play the secrets regardless of them. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see, what else? Any, any, so you dropped two Ice Lances and what else actually for the Lothab and the Kirin Tor? Archmage, well the thing is I was running Giant's Mage with Archmage and Tinnitus and Mirror Images. Oh, so mirror images, images were phased right. out, Ice mm -hmm. Lance is out, and then, yeah, duplicate. Um, I find Cold Light and Duplicate to be amazing just to get to those Ice Blocks. It's kind of goofy initially, I thought, but mm -hmm. um, I find that I usually lack the draw that I want for the second Ice Block, or to get to the late game, or big Drakes, big Giants. So it's okay. kind of, yeah, kind of interesting. At least, like, if you try it out, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Duplicate, I, I kind of wanted to test out too on aggro mage just uh you know kind of trying to target more low curve thing you know like lepernomes and you know things like that to see how much that affects that matchup also uh, but duplicate it definitely an interesting card and hopefully people will try it out some more and see if it helps out the mage class uh trump i know you've been going the free to play route recently and uh, i know you 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 know went down the rogue route and recently changed to zoo but i figured we would talk about the rogue here actually let me bring it up uh and get it up here. So talk about, I guess, your your overall experience with it. All right, so I started with the Rogue free-to-play because uh, I kind of had it planned that during the first week of Naxxramas' release, that's the free wing. So I was like, okay, my free-to-play is going to have an advantage here because I get to get that extra wing in. So I wanted to choose a class which had the class card featured so I could use even more of these cards 
So it was either going to be Poison Seeds or it was going to be Nruven Ambusher. It turns out <laughs> that both are really bad. <laughs> it turns out. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. I, w I wish that weren't the case. Yeah. So uh, the original version of this deck featured um, six of the Max cards with the Nruven Ambusher, of course, also. Mm -hmm. And it had the Nruven Ambusher and the Haunted Creeper and the Nubian Egg. Uh, the final version of the rogue still had the creeper and the egg. So the general concept of it was a value rogue as opposed to a tempo rogue. It didn't run sap. It didn't run mm -hmm. too many things that gave up your card advantage. It just tried to uh, control the board and then draw more cards with the uh, gnomishes and the azures. And eventually later I put in even more card draw, the loot hoarders. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes in a more early version, it would run out of steam on turn six or seven. Uh, like the backspace rogue, for example, it runs out of steam on like turn four or five, but it's a lot more aggressive. And then sometimes you get cold light oracles. This version, since you don't want to give your opponent advantage, you don't run the cold light oracle. And then I was running out of cards around six to seven until I made the curve even later. And then I started running out of cards turn eight and nine. And I think that helped out quite a bit. But the big lesson that I learned with this value type deck and what ultimately made me change is like f the last tens of games that I played, I kept running out of cards near the end, and I would like spend turn nine, and then I would hit them with a dagger, and then I would re dagger, and it was like turn nine or dagger re dagger. <laughs> oh man! It's like hmm, and then I got stuck around <laughs> rank three four, -ish. and that's when I realized. I mean, all of these minions that are actually run the Argent Squire, the Haunted Creeper, the Nubian Egg, Harvest Golem, Dark Iron Dwarf, Defender of Argus. Yeah. They're all running Zoo, and Zoo basically takes care of all of the problems with the value because you get that hero ability to provide constant value, and it helps smooth out your mana curve also since early game, sometimes you want to tap and then play a one card since you're running out of cards soon. And then sometimes you just have a lot of heavy stuff, and then you can only start tapping on turn six or seven when you start needing to. Mm -hmm. And it just fits the... Uh, concept so much better. With the Rogue, I would win games if I drew Azure Drakes and Gnomish Inventors, but sometimes you didn't get them with uh, Zoo. You always have that hero ability to rely on. And when you think about it, Knife Juggler plus Tap is almost as good as Gnomish Inventor, so just always having that option is a lot better than having to rely on drawing the card drawing minions. So this was a good deck to get the fundamentals and then like get to rank three and was a good kind of learning experience for me as to why zoo is strong and why other value decks aren't as strong mm -hmm. yeah and you, you know you're referring to zoo so obviously is i mean well is it because the like zoo is just so popular in that that rank three to one or is any are you seeing any other classes that aren't are dominating except for zoo Oh, uh, there's a good amount of other classes. From my stats, it looked like about one third of the games were played against Zoo, but there's another two thirds out there, and that's on the Asia server. Ranks, oh, okay. Like early legend ranks one to five, so it's not yeah. even necessarily. Uh, it'll change depending on server and rank. Yeah. Okay. Noxus, you were gonna say something. No, I don't know. Okay. I, I've tried the... Uh, because it's so hard to justify running a rogue deck that's somewhat aggressive, that isn't either tempo or aggro, like mm -hmm. a complete aggro, uh, like backspace. I don't know exactly how they call it. Uh, backspace rogue with just complete... I hope I don't m miss my draw or call that oracle in the mid-game, yeah. otherwise I'm dead. Mm -hmm. um, so it feels like rogue is missing that extra card draw. Like, they've got spells that are really good tempo-wise, but then if you're not if you're gonna run those then why not play tempo over uh, value and you know if you're gonna surrender those then why not go fully aggro instead of come kind of mid range yep. so I see exactly why Trump like had that problem I've tried it before it's just it's so hard to make work and w when it works it feels amazing because you're like oh wow this deck is functional but then when you don't draw that no mission inventor mid game it's excruciating I mean we ha we you had to point out that this is a free to play deck too. This is yeah, a, you know deal. this yeah. I mean there's a lot yeah, of, of components even of the aggro deck that you that you can't have because it's free to play unless you're incredibly lucky 
if you're Actually, crazy Actually, while we're on that topic, okay. uh, this deck happened to be one of the decks, and Zoo also, where I was thinking, oh man, if I had any epics or legendaries, would I even add them in here? And my mm, conclusion yeah. was, no, I wouldn't. Uh, really? For the Temper okay. Rogue, though, hmm. you would probably want Leroy, but you could still get away with um, the Arcane Golems and the Shadow Steps, and I considered going that path, but there's so much Zoo right now, and Zoo is a board control deck which will just be able to control the Tempo Rogue really well. Yeah. Tempo Rogue has a really disfavorable matchup against Zoo, which I think is why you don't see a lot of it right now. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it all, mm -hmm. like any at all in a long time. Yeah, it's I haven't seen any either. Been a long time. Uh, so there's no there's no Scrub in this this deck, uh, which I think in the past we you know we've seen Scrub. Is it just replaced by Haunted Creeper for the most part, or what was your thoughts on not putting it in here? Uh, it turned out that it was amazing when you were going second, but half of the time you are unfortunately not going second. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it kind of gets replaced by Haunted Creeper. I uh, I did run that in the initial version, and I just generally have moved the curve up. Like It's possible that it got replaced by Gnomish Inventor, or it got replaced with Lude Hoarder, something along those lines. Okay. Well, definitely good stuff. And you did switch over to Zoo. Uh, any we don't have the Zoo deck, and I'd like to show you guys. But any any notable findings with that that deck from a free to play standpoint? Uh, pre pretty traditional Zoo. Uh, okay. The exceptional thing was that when I switched, I happened to have an enormous win rate with it. Uh, some of it, <laughs> perhaps the luck. Some of it, perhaps because I'm somehow a zoo playing genius. It's hard to say. <laughs> yes. But I ended up going... Yes. <laughs> I ended up with like a 70% win rate going from rank 3 to legend with it. Or rank 4 to legend. So it went That's really pretty good. Well. That's pretty good. 70% That's really sick, sick actually. Nice, actually. Nice streak there. Yeah. Good decision, or some people would say. Uh, that's good. That's definitely great. And the, the new season actually starts today, right? At the end of to, today. So what are your thoughts, actually both of your opinions, like, what, what are your thoughts on, I guess, Nat and Axtramus being um, in the process of being released, you know, there's kind of these, these phases uh, between ladder switches and having it going into the final month. This is, I think August will be the final month to qualify for the BlizzCon regional championships. Thoughts on that? Like, is it gonna? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, is it? Do you think it's? I mean, it's obviously fair because everybody has this. You know, it's in the same boat. But um, do you think you know just having it being again just kind of mid-release with an expansion and early on that it's gonna affect the? I guess what you know, just the the good players that have been good for the last few seasons aren't aren't gonna be able. You know, may, they they might not be able to make it to the to the top this season. I mean, are you gonna? Are we gonna see that sort of thing? I doubt it. Okay. I would say it might even favor them because a lot of the people who are playing on ladder, uh, who aren't in that qualifying like top sixteen, mm -hmm. most of them happen to not necessarily build their own decks. Maybe. So oh. if okay. pros have some kind of in well, I would say pros have some kind of insight as to what they should be playing in a specific meta and they can adapt on their own. I guess this favors deck builders a lot more. Um, this current situation yeah. a lot more than it did before, maybe. Yeah, yeah Trump. that's pretty much what I have. Yeah, I mean, that reminds me, you talked about the ladder switching over. It turns out mm -hmm. that I believe Asia has already switched over, which is why yesterday was kind of my big, okay, this isn't working, let me switch to Z for the final day. Uh, so I need to get that done before today, since Asia is like some 10, 16 hours ahead. Right. So they may have already had the ladder season in. Um, let's see, in terms of this well i mean as a f end note to this season i think it was one of the hardest seasons like i watched some of the other top streamers who are really good at constructed and i noted that even they had a really tough time maintaining a high legend drink mm -hmm. and some of them i saw like some of the really good ones i saw get to like rank two and then they kept playing and then they fell to rank 100 200 and then I saw many others with rank 100, 200. I think it was one of the most competitive seasons to date, most notably because people had figured things out. Now, this coming uh, month is the month where there's going to be the most changes because of the new cards, and mm -hmm. I do like how that favors 
deck builders a bit more and people who are faster to adapt. And I think it's also going to be very tough competition, but you can showcase your skill by bringing something a bit different and making mm -hmm. some innovations and just adapting faster. Yeah, what I you know one of the things I noticed I'm not sure about I noticed it this season, but in the prior seasons, I, I I noticed that at least a few of the the players that ended up you know in the top ten or top five, uh, you know some of them basically just came up with a a deck that countered you know like the most popular deck for instance we're talking about backspace rogue right whenever that first was introduced uh and even like um kit cats is is uh Corcron elite you know modification to his control warrior those, those two decks in particular i felt like at the end of the season they just dominated the ladder like in the last few days and people just like soared uh so is that the type of is is that generally the the strategy I guess to to finish like really really high? I mean there are some folks that just play like like for instance Miracle and just are able to pull it off for force them being like one of those people. Uh, but generally speaking, like Trump, like is that the strategy? Just figure out just like one deck in the last few days of the season and and try to you know just just climb the ranks because you just have a counter to to most everything. Yeah, I mean I think that's a great goal for any deck builder at any time. Mm -hmm. Just face uh just do something that has a high win rate against the top two top three because it i've generally found that when you look at the top three decks they generally take about 66 percent of the decks played so if you have a favorable matchup against two-thirds of the field then you're going to do really well and sometimes the first place deck is in the most extreme of circumstances holding something like maybe it itself is one third of the field and then if you have a deck that's good against that and then a deck that's just like even if you're just good against that decks like it will also be beat so if you build a deck just against that and not having it suck against the others you'll already have a favorable matchup against more than 50 percent of the field and then mm -hmm. you'll just be like okay against the other 50 percent and that's just generally the goal like if you can Take advantage of what you see out there. You'll do well. And I like that about card games. Yeah, definitely. And, I, and it's more likely to happen, again, this, this season, I think, of all the times, because, again, like not as many things will be figured out, I think, by the end of the month. Um, I, the last release will be, I think, with maybe a week left in this season. So uh, there, there's going to be some crazy times there at the end. And they're going to uh, open it. They're going to close the season one week after the last snacks from this release. Yeah, that's going to be weird. I think so. I mean, there's three more, right? Wow. And and it's it's basically yeah. the beginning of August, so maybe a week and a half or something like that. It's going to be crazy time. So hopefully you guys have already qualified, or you know, you guys are going to be like really prepared for. Uh, uh, just a battle, you know, just a, a big battle for sure. All right, well, why don't we um, why don't we take a quick break and let you guys actually get some questions in? The Q and A portion is going to start right after the break. And tweet your questions to at ChamMV. You've already got uh, several questions, but I figured I'd give you guys even more of a chance to do that. So we will be right back, guys. <laughs> 